Wow, there's a lot of you out here. How's it going? <laughs> um, I know there's a lot of you East Coasters here as well, and I'm still catching up on that sleep. So <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great experience. Uh, so my name is Sarah. Um, I'm here from New York. I have been a software developer for 17 years. Um, it's longer than some of the people on stage today have been alive. Um, big thanks to the folks at Red Hat for letting us come and tell you a little bit about Jewel Boss. So without further ado, I'm going to do exactly that. Okay. So today we're going to do a few things. First, I'm going to tell you why we built Jewel Boss and why we think it's a really important technology. Um, I'm going to show you some amazing magic. And then we're going to have one of the Jewel Boss experts come as a special guest and talk to you more about the deep technology behind what we're building. So show of hands in the audience. Who here was under 18 years old when they started coding? It's hard for me to see you guys. Yep, look around. I'd have to say at least 50% of you have your hands up. All right, keep your hand up if you were under 15 when you started coding. I think more hands up just went there. <laughs> I don't know how that math works, but awesome. OK, great. Yeah, a little of, I think about half of you, half of you have your hands up. That's really neat. Um, I've done a bunch of informal polls on the internet about this. I found that probably about two thirds of professional coders were under 18 when they started coding. Um, I myself was 11. I was a homeschooled kid, so a little weird. I'm part of the generation, and some of you may be as well, is uh, the reason we became coders is because we were lonely, <laughs> not because we made a lot of money. <laughs> um, so I was 11, and this was before the internet was a thing, and we had these things called BBSs, and you would call up someone else's computer in your town, and you would hang out with people and chat with them, um, and play role-playing games with them. It didn't have to be your town, but if it wasn't, your mom would yell at you for long-distance fees. Um, and uh, I got really excited about computers and coding because of the community that I found online. Okay, so this is sometimes the most controversial part of this presentation. I promise you that they dominate our lives in many ways, even if you don't even, if you don't even know a 9 to 14 year old girl, um, even if you just see them on the street sometimes, they are deciding what you and I do on a regular basis. Hear me out for a second here. So who here knows who this guy is? Okay, you don't have to raise your hands, but I think most people know who this guy is, right? So this guy used to be this guy, and then teenage girls were like, I think this guy has some talent to him. I think that he's got a future. And now, he's a huge celebrity today. What about this guy? Just got his first Oscar, you know, just kind of starting out. Well, this guy used to be this guy. And I am proud to tell you that I am one of the many girls that discovered him and decided this guy has a future. <laughs> All right, raise your hand if you listen to Taylor Swift. Just kidding. I won't make you do it, but also a lot of people are <laughs> like that. So, that's great. <laughs> so um, Taylor Swift, we listen to Taylor Swift because these girls discovered Taylor Swift. It wasn't a 35-year-old that was like, hmm, this Taylor Swift is pretty neat. Um, no one cares what we think. But even bigger than that, these huge unicorns that all of us, some of us work for, some of us wish we invented, these were discovered by young teenage girls. No one is checking to see what apps we're using. They're finding new communities in these, in, in these platforms and saying, this is how I want to commune with my friends. Things like Instagram, Snapchat, and Musical.ly all start with this demographic, and then we get our cues from them. If you don't know what Musical.ly is, I promise you, ask your nearest 9 to 14-year-old friend. If you don't do that, you'll hear about it in a few years. But this demographic, their futures are all at risk. Everyone here knows how much the field of software development is growing and how important technical literacy is to the future of our youth. However, just 18% of computer science graduates are girls. 
just 19% of AP computer science test takers, and just 15% of Google's tech force identify as female. So we decided to do something about that. We were inspired by platforms like MySpace and GeoCities, um, things like Neopets and Minecraft, all places where kids find something they love and they're like, okay, to make this better, all I have to do is learn how to code. I can totally do that. Um, so we wanted to do that. So we talked to 200 girls. We went to schools, we sat down with them, and we were like, what makes you tick? What are you excited about? And what we heard from them over and over again is their friends. Their friends and their community are pivotal to them at this time in their lives. So when we started talking to them about a smart friendship bracelet, that's when they started really freaking out. Um, so we built Jewelbots, and Jewelbots uh, has an active online community um, where girls can work together, share code that they've built, and learn from each other, help each other troubleshoot sometimes. The way they work is when you are near your friends, your bracelets light up the same color, and you can use them to send secret messages to each other. Um, and you can also code them, so you can say things like, when all my swimming friends are together in the same room, all of our bracelets should go rainbow colors, which is really fun. You can even build games. Jewelbots started shipping about a year and a half ago, about after a lot of work, um, and we are about to ship our 12,000th Jewelbot. We're in 38 city, sorry, 38 countries, um, and we're just getting started. Okay. So now is time for the magic, and I have an important question. Does anyone here want to be my friend? Pick me. Anyone Pick in the me. back? All right, Pick did me. I hear someone? Did I hear someone? Me. Oh, great. Oh, hey, me. Tim. How's it going? I don't have many friends. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm so glad that we'll be friends. Okay. That's awesome. So we just need to pair our jewel box. Okay. Okay, and in order to do that, we're going to hold the magic button in the middle down for two seconds. So one locomotive, two locomotives. Great. And then we got a white flashing. I'm going to do yours again. I did it one wrong. One locomotive, two locomotive. It's, we're adults. We can't do it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> It's the kids that are smart. All right, so now we get to pick our friendship color. I'm going right. to pick red hat red. Does that work for you? Uh, sure. OK, great. <laughs> so now I just picked red hat red, and my Jewelbot is saying, all right, Tim's Jewelbot, do you want to be my friend? And Tim's Jewelbot is like, I'm thinking about it. I think so. OK, now we're red friends. OK, great. So now we're red friends. When we're together, our bracelets are going to be red, and I will send you a secret message when it's time for you to come out and, inter and introduce the next guest. Awesome. Well, great. thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Very good. I'm so glad we could be friends. And if only people would start following me on Twitter, it'd be a great day. <laughs> awesome. All right, so now you can see the uh, not so technical part of Jewelbox. They use Bluetooth to sense when your friends are nearby, so they work in about a 30 meter, 100 foot range. Um, but to tell you about the actual technology part, I'm going to introduce you to someone much more qualified than I am. Um, so uh, Ellie is one of our Jewel Boss ambassadors. She has an amazing YouTube channel that I would please ask you to check out and subscribe. She's Ellie G. Jewel Boss on YouTube. Um, she's an amazing coder, and I'm really excited to introduce you today to Ellie Galloway. Come on out, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Ellie Galloway, and I'm going to show you how I got coding and then show you some coding in action. I first started coding at age six when my dad helped me code a game. Soon after, I programmed for MakeCode for Minecraft. Then my dad had shown me Jewelbot. I keep coding because it helps people. For instance, for instance, you could code autocorrect to make it a lot smarter so it can help make people say run faster. But what about something more serious? What if you could help answer 911 calls and give alerts? Before we start, I have three main steps to share with you. 
I often use these steps when coding my Jewelbot and continue to use some of these now. Step one, read the instructions. <laughs> in, in other words, this means for Jewelbot to memorize the colors and positions. A way to memorize these, because it's tricky, is to remember all the colors and positions you will type will be capital. And remember that the positions are either short for Northwest, Southwest, Northeast, and Southeast. Step two, learn the basic codes. When it comes to coding, you need to work your way up. Step three, discover. Feel free to discover once you mastered everything. Now let's get to coding. Let's use our, let's first use combining lights. So under void loop, I'm going to put LED dot turn on single SW and blue. And before we make sure that this works, we gotta put LED, LED. Okay, now let's type this again. LED dot turn on single. Now let's do SW green. Now we have our first sketch. So let's explain what this means. LED LED is a function that to control the LED lights. LED turn on single SW blue tells that SW light to turn blue and green flashes so quickly with the blue, it creates aqua. Now, let's do another code. Let's I'm going to use a more advanced command to make a custom color using RGB. Let's use a soft pink using 255, 105, and 180. Now, let's type this in the button press function. So, let's do LED, LED, LED dot set light. And now we can do, let's do position three, 255, 105, and 180. Now, let's explain what this means. The first one stands for the position. The three others stand for red, green, and blue. RGBs can only go up to 255, but there are 256 levels. But if you count the first one as zero, then get 255. So let's first, before we move on, let's show how this works. So this is it before. And now let's turn it on to see how our aqua turned out. Now let's see how our RGB light turned out. So we are looking for a soft pink, so let's see how it looks. Think about how much the code you write can help people all around the world. These ideas are just the beginning of opening a new world in technology. A fresh start is right around the corner. I hope this helped you learn a little bit about coding and even made you want to try it out for yourself. Thank you.